Hey everyone, it's Paul Dysinger with Born to Grow Online Gardening University and I'm going to share with you just something really simple that you can do to get a little idea of how healthy your soil is in your garden. And it's called a little bug census, or an earthworm census. Um, see how many earthworms or bugs you can find in a square foot of your garden soil. So I've got a, a little bucket here and we're going to head outside. I wanted to do this, test out our flower garden, our flower beds here just right outside the house and see how healthy the soil is in them. So it's a little drizzly outside. I'm going to grab my coat here real quick. All right, so here we are outside and it's a little bit drizzly. It's rainy and it's a little bit cold. So I don't know what we're going to find, but here is our flower flower bed here. And I'm going to go ahead. You want to get about a, a square foot of soil. I'd say that's probably at least a square foot. All right, I'm going to take this back inside because it's kind of miserable outside here. Okay, now we're ready to start looking through this soil. Oh wow, look at this gold. I bet there's all kinds of stuff in here. So basically, what we're going to do is, I've got another bucket here. I'm going to just start sifting through this and working through it slowly to see how many bugs I can find. In fact, oh wow, I see one already. Look at this. It's an earthworm. Wow, check it out. Alright, that's what we want to see right there. Focus in on that. And so I've got another bucket here that I'm going to put whatever whatever bugs and stuff I can find and just sift the soil into this bucket and we'll see how long it takes me to do this here. So you want to capture any little bug that is visible to your site that you can see. But just do the best you can and see what you can calculate. The earthworms you'll be able to tell pretty well. It's going to be the smaller bugs like your little pill bugs and other guys that might sneak past you. Oh, look at this. I was just trying a new method here, putting it in, putting a little handful of dirt in a, another container and kind of shaking it around. And look what we found. Another little guy here. So, let me stick him in here. Oh, look. My earthworm's trying to escape. Hey, look at this, look at this. If you just take a little bit of time to look a little bit more closely, you might see some of these little tiny things. Look how small that is compared to my finger. It's like a little tiny, it's either a really tiny baby worm or something, or it, there's a good possibility it's a little nematode, something along those lines. So <laughs> there's just a lot of life in the soil. Look how small that is, and there's so much more like that in there. You know, it's amazing to think that in a teaspoon of the soil, just, you know, just a little tiny little bit, little teaspoon, there's absolutely billions, billions of little bacteria and fungi and little life forms that we can't even see. You have to look through a microscope, and we're not looking for those right now, but it's just an incredible number. It's hard to even fathom. Yeah, but to wrap your mind around it, think about if you were looking through soil through a microscope and you were counting one bacteria, one little bacteria, every single second, like one, one thousand, two, one thousand, every second, it would take you over 31 years, or about 31 years, to count all the bacteria. Oh look, I found another little earthworm here. All the bacteria in just a teaspoon of soil. And... To put that in perspective, <laughs> I mean, 31 years is a long time, but that means that if you were going to count all of the all of the bacteria in a big in a bucket like this, you know, or a gallon, you know, a gallon and a half of soil, it would take you over 31,000 years counting one bacteria a second. That's pretty astronomical. That's pretty phenomenal. Okay, we're about halfway done here, and take a look at what we've already got. This whole little mine of Earthworms, a whole bunch of earthworms here. I hope this get focused. Look at that's a little earwig looking guy running across there. And there's a centipede down between the earthworms. Okay, so here we have it sifted through the whole pile of our nice dirt there. And look at what I have here. Earthworms making their escape. Alright, so the basic idea here is the more life that you have thriving in your soil, the better. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few seconds here. But to start out with, they say that a good amount of earthworms for a healthy soil 
in about in about a square foot of soil like we just did in this bucket here you know it's approximation you want about 10 to 30 earthworms and i just counted out 20 earthworms that we found out here Whoop, there he goes right back into the soil there so I'm pretty happy with that, 20 earthworms, and here's the reason why. When we're talking about earthworms like this, you know, they're little, living little beings and they need something, they need to eat something, they need to have some type of energy source to survive. And so just like we eat food, it gives us energy for the day, they also eat something in the soil and what they eat is little bacteria and fungi and protozoa, you know, occasional nematode or two, other little tiny, much smaller, I mean bacteria, you know, you can't even see them except through powerful microscopes, tiny little other life forms that they are feeding off of in your soil. And what's so good about that is that all of those other, well, specifically the bacteria and the fungi and the nematodes pr play critical roles in making nutrients available to your plant's roots. And that's a whole nother subject that you could go into. But basically, the fact that we have a good amount of little earthworms here is a pretty good indication that they have a food source. And so that means that those bacteria and those fungi and the protozoa and nematodes and all are probably in the soil. Like that little one, uh, you know, that little worm that I was showing you that could have been a little nematode. It, it shows that they are most likely in the soil so that these earthworms are surviving because that's what they are feeding off of. So that's a pretty good sign right in and of itself right there. Another good sign here is the diversity of life. You know, we have this little snail that I found down in the bucket here. I have a little earwig looking thing and a centipede and these other little little bugs. And what happens is these all make up what's called the soil food web. and you know, the larger ones eating the smaller ones down, all the way down to, like I was talking about with the earthworms, the bacteria and fungi, which are very critical and helpful in making nutrients available to your plants. So you want a good diversity. And then another thing that kind of gives you a little, a little clue that good things are happening in your soil is if it has this crumbly texture to it. What they're called little soil aggregates, these little crumbles. And what happens is the bacteria and fungi, they're so small that they, you know, they'll just get, end up getting washed away with water. And so what they do is they secrete these little slimes that end up sticking onto little soil particles. And then the par soil particles stick to each other and form like this little crumbly texture. And if you'll notice, it, what happens is it forms little air spaces where air can get down into the soil and water can get down into the soil and just forms a, a very good structure for your soil and for your roots to grow in. So those are some some things, some signs when you're looking at your soil and you're looking at the life that's in your soil and give you a little clue of how well your soil is doing, how healthy your soil is, just by looking at you know how many earthworms are there, how much of these larger life forms are there, and it gives you a little clue of how much of the smaller ones that are there that are critical for making those nutrients available to your plants. So that's just something simple that you can do from home, go out into your garden, take this little soil <laughs> soil test, you know, sift through it, find how many worms you are, and get a little idea of how healthy your soil is looking and <clears throat> And then you can start looking at ways that, that you can improve it, adding more organic matter. So hey, thanks so much for watching, and go ahead and share this video with your gardening friends, you know, and or leave me a comment in the section down below. Share with me what you think. Um, share with me about your experience uh, looking at your soil and building a healthier soil in your garden. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and jump on over if you're interested in more gardening videos like this. Jump on over to borntogrow.net and you can subscribe with your email for more gardening videos like this one.